Hi everyone, my name is Fernanda, I'm a 3D designer in the Munich office and it's a pleasure to be here at the Virtual User Summit. In this workshop, you'll learn how to prepare your Cloth 3D files when exporting to virtual and augmented reality. I'll show you some tips on how to optimize your files and we will go through the export settings and understand which kind of um, file formats you should choose when exporting to VR and AR in order to get a great result on your project. Hope you enjoy it. Feel free to write on the chat if you have any questions and I'll start now by sharing my screen. When it comes to VR and AR, the file size becomes an important factor, especially when exporting to AR. The file size should be the smallest possible, and one way to achieve this is by reducing the number of polygons. So ideally, you should have all your patterns with a particle distance of 20, but in case you still need to have some of them with a smaller particle distance in order to show better the details, then you should evaluate which patterns can be changed. Here, in my case, the sleeves, the pants, and the back of my garments can easily have a particle distance of 20. Now, the neck and the curve patterns, I prefer keeping on a lower particle distance to get better details. At this moment, what I can also do is to change the mesh type. By default, the meshes in Clo are always triangles, but we can change them to quad on patterns that have mostly straight angles. To change that, you have to select the patterns and go straight down to miscellaneous in the property editor, and here you can find mesh type. In my project, I will change the mesh type to quad on the patterns from the sleeves, from the pants, that have mostly straight angles and that wouldn't be too compromised if I had changed them to quad. I can always simulate to confirm if this change is not harming my final design idea. And notice that when I change the mesh to quad, the number of vertices falls, indicating that my file size will be smaller. Another efficient way to reduce the size of your file is by changing the type of top stitching. By default, top stitches in Clo are OBJs, which means that they are geometry files in order to look more realistic. But you can change the top stitches to texture instead of geometry and it will reduce considerably the size of your file. To do that, click on your top stitch in the object browser and go to Type, where you can choose between OBJ and Texture. Let's see these two t-shirts. The one in the left was exported with its top stitch set as a texture and the one in the right as an OBJ. Of course, the OBJ top stitch has much more resolution than the texture top stitch, but let's compare the size of their file. The one with OBJ has more or less 33 megabytes, whereas the one with texture has 7 megabytes, almost 5 times smaller. Next step is to bake the textures. VR and AR environments demand high performance and minimal visual lag, so baking is fundamental as it will simplify complex surface effects. I've baked my textures previously, as it can be a little time consuming, and we'll go over with this file now. If you want to know more on how to bake your textures, check out our tutorial on YouTube, How to Bake Texture Maps. Once this is done, it is time to export the file, so let's move on to understand the different kinds of file formats and its export settings. When exporting your garments to virtual or augmented reality, prefer using FBX, GLTF or GLB file formats because they are capable of holding a variety of data such as mesh, UV, animation, rigs, etc. OBJ is a much simpler file format. It supports only the mesh, simple materials and UVs. So let's start by getting familiar with FBX and its settings. FBX is one of the most popular file formats used in 3D editors, game engines, films, VR and AR. It easily exchanges data between applications and after being exported can still be edited. However, 
FBX has two major downsides. Firstly, it is a closed format, meaning that you need a system supported by SDK to use it. It is not supported by a web browser, for instance. Secondly, the lighting models stored by a FBX file have not evolved as 3D editors and game engines, which utilizes complex shader networks and BPR approaches. In other words, it becomes a limitation for garments with reflections, metallics, etc. What happens most of the time is that after importing to your desired application, the materials still have to be fixed or even redone. So I will go ahead and export my file as an FBX and let's see the export settings now. The first thing you have to decide is whether you'd like to export with or without an avatar. In my case, I prefer exporting the garment only, so I will not be selecting this option. But note that here you can also exclude the rig in case you want to. Next, it asks if you prefer having it single or multiple objects. The best way to understand the difference between them is by seeing its final result. So I have prepared this file with both garments exported as FBX. The one in the left was exported as a single object, whereas the one in the right was exported as a multiple object. So let's see the difference between them. When choosing single, the garment becomes a unique object. On the other hand, when choosing multiple, the garment keeps its pattern separated, so I can select them individually, as I am doing right now. Next is the texture surface. If you want to apply the additional thickness you've added to your 3D, then choose Thick. And this also helps your garment to look more realistic. If you choose Thin, any additional thickness will be added and the final result will look as thin as a paper. Further, we have the unified UVs. Let's tick this box as we want to export it with the textures that we have baked. And here, you can define the image size. Just remember that higher numbers increase the file size. If you have an animation, this option will be available. Remember to tick it in case you want to export it as well. When we come to basic, let's leave the file type as binary. A binary file is only readable by programs. ASCII file, on the other hand, is made of human readable text, which means that it can be opened and edited as a document. If you don't need it as a text, then save it as a binary, as it will take up less space. As I mentioned previously, FBX needs a system supported by SDK. Here, you can choose its version. I'll go ahead and save it with the most updated one. Finally, let's keep the texture as embed media and hit OK. If FBX has limitations regarding materials representation, GLTF and GLB, on the other hand, read BPR materials, offering a much better result. These file formats are widely used for AR and VR. Also, differently from FBX, they are open source files that can be used in native web applications. By comparison, they are known as the JPEG of the 3D world. Now, the difference between them is that GLTF stores its information in JSON file format, while GLB stores information in a binary file format like FBX, resulting in compact file sizes and fast loading time. The export settings are very similar to FBX, but let's have a quick look at it. On the first part of the export settings, you can select what you want to export, the patterns, the avatar, graphics, and trims. Just as I did in FBX, I will export only the garment without the avatar. Next, we already saw the difference when choosing single or multiple objects, as well as thin or thick, and also the unified UV coordinates. When it comes to option, ticking light will not make a difference as I don't have any additional light on my 3D. You can leave the default settings for basic. And in axis conversion, make sure that Y is as up so you get the model in the right direction. I will choose save as embedded, but will not need to zip either XML, so I'll not choose those. The single difference from when exporting as GLB is that you don't have the option to embed files, and the rest of the settings is absolutely the same. Now that we have exported the same file as FBX and GLTF, let's compare their size. I have previously exported the same file as GLB, so we can compare all the three of them together. 
Comparing GLB and GLTF, GLB is 6 MB smaller and FBX ended up also with a smaller size. And now let's compare their final result and see how they look when imported as FBX, GLB and GLTF. I have imported them back to Clo. You can see that on my 2D window we only have the silhouette of the avatar and the little flags that I created to label each file. At first they look quite similar, but when we look to the back of the garment where I have metallic and transparent material, GLB and GLTF represent much better the original file. In conclusion, if you need to edit the files using different 3D softwares, then FBX might be the right file format for you. However, remember that after exporting you might need to edit or even redo the materials of your 3D. Now, if you want to transmit your 3D efficiently over the internet with more precise materials, you should opt for GLTF or GLB, remembering that GLB offers a smaller file size, so for these reasons I'll choose to export my file as GLB. Just one little last tip, some game engines require you to add a plugin in order to be able to import a file as GLTF. So, here is my final file exported as GLB and ready to be imported to a VR platform. In the background is the store display created by my colleague Damar. If you haven't checked out her workshop on how to create a store display, I highly recommend you to watch it, as well as the other amazing content that we have prepared for you. Hope you have enjoyed this workshop and thank you for watching.